What do you believe about depression? Do you believe depression is a real thing? I believe that feeling depressed is real. I don't believe depression as a clinical disease is real, no. Really? Correct. You don't believe people can be clinically depressed? I think PTSD is very real. I've, unfortunately, I have some friends who suffer from that. Mm. I know that feeling depressed is real. I believe that the number one power you have against these things are taking, trying to take control of your own mind and affecting your own life. I believe that it's not healthy to hand over all your power and believe that depression is an outside disease that you can't affect. I know that when I've had difficult periods in my life and also many of my friends, like I've said, suffered from PTSD and been through terrible things, I've lived a very difficult life and I know people who have, that the things that made them feel better is when they woke up and said, you know what, I'm not going to allow this to damage me anymore, I'm going to take responsibility, I'm going to get up and I'm going to fight this as hard as right. I can. I'm sitting there and saying to men, look, life as a man is shit. It's always been shit. It's never been good. When men wake up and say I'm depressed and life is hard and I'm sad and I'm struggling right now, I say, okay, throughout history, men have always struggled. Happiness is for children and women. Name a time in history it was better to be a man. Was it better to be a man in World War II? Was it better to be a man on the Titanic? Was it better to be a man in the Napoleonic Wars? Was it better to be a man when you were sitting in Vienna and the Mongol horde arrived ready to decapitate any male and enslave all the females? When's it ever been good to be a man? Building the pyramids, was that fun? It's always sucked. The only time being a man ever is good is if you become an exceptional man, which is even something feminists admit, because feminists sit and complain about men and say, well, men have this, men have that, but they're talking about 2% of men. They, Fascinating. They don't talk about all men. They say men have the best jobs. 2% of men have the best jobs. Most men carry trash, so you're talking crap. So everyone accepts that the best possible human experience that exists is the top 2% of men. Anything below that sucks as a man. You're better off being a chick. So what I say to men is, look, life's hard. It's always going to be hard. It's always going to suck. It always has. The only way to get out is to become excellent and perform at a level where your echelon is so high that you get to live this brand new experience. You need to become strong and smart and interesting and charismatic. You need to become rich, powerful, well-known, connected. You need to do it. I think that as a man, your happiness comes from feeling respected over feeling loved. And the reason perhaps you're happy now is because you have more respect for yourself because of the decisions you're making and Amen. you have self-respect. Yeah. And I think that a lot of men, even if they have self-respect, if nobody else respects them, they're struggling. I think male depression can be fixed with respect. I want to tap into depression. What's yeah. your thoughts on that? I, I think that it's massively overdiagnosed. Mm -hmm. I say depression isn't real because I speak in absolutes. I think the idea of feeling depressed is real. I don't feel the I, I don't feel like it's a clinical disease that you catch from the sky and it can't be fixed. I feel like depression is feedback, pain is feedback, and your mind and body is telling you something must change. And if you make those changes, you will feel happier. I don't buy into the idea that it is a disease. I think it's situational and you must change your situation and your actions and your decisions to feel better. And that's why I say it's not real. It's not a disease. I do not believe in depression. That's just who I am as a person. I don't believe in it. I do not believe in things that take power away from me. So, I, I'm, and people sit there and they try very hard to convince me it's real, which is actually quite interesting because it's always usually depressed people who sit there and try very hard to defend this idea. If you're so scared, if depression's so terrible, why are you sticking up for it? Why are you fighting so hard to convince me it's such a, it's such a powerful force? Why shouldn't you be doing the opposite? Shouldn't you be listening to me? Whose team are you on? Like, do you want to be depressed? Like, it, it's insanity these people who are so desperate to push this idea said this many times before, I don't believe in things that take away power from me. I don't care if depression is real. I don't care if I'm wrong. I don't believe in something that takes away power from me because I can't become depressed if I don't believe in depression. And that allows me to shield my mind from the idea of being a depressed person. I can feel depressed temporarily, but I can never become a depressed person because it doesn't exist. You can lock me in a Romanian jail cell for 93 days with cockroaches. I will not be depressed. I will feel a little bit sad, of course, but I will never become a depressed person because I don't believe in it. And when I say this, depressed people are like, no, depression's real, it's ruined my life, it's taken everything from me, depression's real, depression's real. I said, you sound like it's promotional team. You it sound like, like it's PR their God. team. It's their God, you're they're worshiping it. You're worshiping it because it gives you a cure-all excuse for your monumental failures, as opposed to waking up and going, you know what, maybe I'm a fuck up, nothing to do with depression, maybe I've just been fucking up. Maybe depression isn't real and I've just been fucking up and I should fix a few of these things. What have I been reaping? Ex absolutely. And you'd be amazed how depression will lose power over your life and lose its ability to destroy your life if you stop giving it so much respect and just wake up and say, let me fix X, Y, and Z. What can I control?
let's pretend I'm completely wrong, right? It was, we, we can look at situational depression like you just described. We can talk about brain uh, imbalance and chemical imbalance. We can talk about clinical depression that you get. It's chronic and there's nothing to do about it, whatever. Let's pretend all these things are completely true. The best option, the best thing to do is still to get up, be an adult, control your emotions, be stoic, and do the things you're supposed to do day after day. Laying in bed and doing nothing is never going to be the best option. The best option is still to go to the gym, to work hard, to run your business, to be successful. So it doesn't matter. We're talking about the different positions on the chessboard. But if the rules of the game remain the same, regardless of the position, you're still trying to win. You, you still have to do the same things. So does it even matter at this point? If you come along and say he's depressed because of X and he's depressed because of Y and he's depressed because of Z and the answer to all of them is still the same thing, then I don't give a fuck why you're depressed. All I know, what I will state as a matter of fact is this world is hyper competitive, especially as a man. Mm -hmm. Most men are walking through life and they don't realize that it's constant competition. Mm -hmm. I was driving here, even as I was driving here, I was looking out the window and I was looking at all these people just walking around. One of them had a fucking croissant. One of them was dressed like a dick egg because it's London. He thinks he's fucking looks cool. He's <laughs> a fucking moron. We've all seen them. Yeah, moron. <laughs> Some of the dude just talking shit on the phone. Some of the guy with headphones in waiting to be fucking murdered, wouldn't even hear it coming. And all these NPCs, I'm just looking at them going, do they realize they're in endless constant competition? Every single pound they want, someone else wants. Every single girl they want, someone else wants. There are people like me out here. I will destroy, you could get all 30 of them in a room and I will sit by myself and absolutely annihilate them in any single metric. And they're just sitting there just fucking floundering and wandering through life, unaware of how competitive the world is. Well, and whinging how unfair and it is. And whinging how unfair it is. And this is my point. If the world is truly that competitive, you do not have time to be depressed because it's a non-competitive mind state. Mm. I, you could be depressed for X, Y, Z, whatever. I'm not depressed. And I want the money you want, and I want the girl you want, and I want the status you want, and the car you want, and the house you want. And I'm going to get it, and you're fucking not. This is the thing about society and MSM and all this garbage in the matrix. They try and convince you, don't worry if you're being a loser because people feel sorry for you and you'll get attention for it and you'll be okay in the end. And it's all this temporary fixes of dopamine by saying, I'm sad, don't worry, bro, you'll be okay. But it's bullshit. They don't care long-term. The world doesn't care. Nobody really cares. Chicks don't care. Business doesn't care. You are going to fail. It's kind of interesting because everyone pretends they give a fuck, but nobody does, mm. especially women. And I know I get attacked for women, but women truly don't give a fuck. If you ask a woman the kind of man she wants, she will never say depressed or sad, ever. She wants a man who is ultra capable, ultra competent. I, I've literally had women say to me, you know what I love being around you? I'm like, what? I don't have to think. I'm like, what do you mean? Because I just turn up and like, we just walk in the hotel and everyone, staff do anything we want and the jet's just on the runway and we just land and I'm in this beautiful place and I don't even know where I am and I get to just turn my brain off and it's great. Like, they want someone who is fun and spontaneous and charismatic and successful. They don't have time for sad dudes. They don't care. So the world doesn't care. The world has never given a shit about sad men. So if you're going to sit there and self-diagnose yourself as a sad man, you're going to have a shit life and nobody's ever going to give a fuck and you're going to perpetually lose forever. And that is your decision. I am so scared of being that person. The idea of that terrifies me to the point where I don't even want to accept that as a reality that can possibly exist. I don't give a shit what happens to me in my life. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care if the worst, most heinous things I could possibly imagine happen to me. I know that my sadness, my depression will be temporary because I will never stay a loser. It is against my creed, it's not in my DNA. I disagree that if you're die if you have, if you feel depressed, I disagree that you cannot affect it and change your life and take control and fix yourself and feel happier. I disagree with that. Do you think, do you think, I, do I, re I refuse to accept that there are people out there who cannot become happy, contented individuals. I refuse to accept we live in a world where God has created people who no matter how hard they work and how good their life becomes, can't be happy. I don't accept that. I accept that the universe is a very giving place and that God loves all of us. And if you try your best and you work hard, you can become a better person. When I say depression isn't real, I'm saying that because I don't believe in things that can take away power from me. If I believed in depression, I would have been depressed in jail. But I can't be depressed if I don't believe in it. If you don't believe in ghosts, how can you be haunted? You have two people in a, in a haunted house. One believes in ghosts, one doesn't. There's a knock in the night. One wakes up, calls an exorcist, is terrified, looks for a ghost. The other guy doesn't believe in ghosts. Knock in the night, goes back to sleep. It's the belief in the ghost that gives it the power. But I don't believe in depression. I believe in feeling depressed. Sure, we're humans, we have emotions. Sometimes we feel depressed, sometimes we feel happy. I don't believe in the idea of becoming a depressed person who has depression. I don't believe in that. I don't think that's possible for me. So if I don't believe in it, how can it happen?
I don't believe in depression. So why would I not adopt the mindset that makes me the most capable predator I can possibly be? Why not adopt the mindset that makes me as competent and as fearsome as possible? If you have to install software in your own mind, why would I not install software that makes me capable of not only driving a Bugatti and flying on private jets, but sitting in a Romanian dungeon covered in cockroaches? I need to be able to do all of it. So why would I believe in something that made me incapable? I don't believe in depression because I think that even the belief in another itself, when you feel depressed, you'll start to consider maybe I have depression. When you go see a psychiatrist who tells you you have depression and they want you on pills. It's the belief that goes down the spiral. If I feel sad, I go, I'm depressed today. I'll be fine tomorrow. I do not believe it's a disease that you catch from the sky and you cannot affect. I believe that no matter what happens, I believe you have control of your own mind and you can fight against it. I believe if you change your circumstances in your life, you may feel different. I'll give you a quick example. I had a guy who emailed me saying he was clinically depressed and he was going to kill himself. I obviously am not a psychiatrist, I'm not a doctor. I told him, because I replied to my emails. I said, have you been to a psychiatrist? He said, yes, I'm clinically depressed. I've been on these pills, this amount of time. I've been on antidepressants, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. I said, I don't know what to say to you besides this. And he, he said he lost his girlfriend. That's why I became clinically depressed. I said, listen, go to the gym, get a six pack first. Once you've got a six pack, email me again. If you still feel like killing yourself, I don't know what else to say to you. But I'd say, strong body is a strong mind, go train. He went, he started sending me progress pictures, emailing me him getting in better, better shape. And eventually got a six pack. He's now a professional bodybuilder. And he said, I can't believe I was considering that. I feel so much better, etc." The doctor was telling him he was clinically depressed and couldn't cure it. He started taking control of his own life and now he felt better. When I said depression wasn't real, the number of people who would attack me defending depression, this is why I didn't understand. Right. You say depression isn't real, but depression's ruined my life and it's super real and it ruined my life and I lost my marriage. I'm like, if I told you it wasn't real, you should be coming to me saying, Tell me how it's not real. Please help me with right. my depression. Why are you trying to convince me that it's real? Why are you sticking up for it? And <laughs> why are you defending depression? And, <laughs> and why would I adopt the thinking of someone who's sad? Why would I? You're going to convince me to take your worldview. You just told me your wife left you. You're fat and you want to kill yourself. <laughs> and you want me to sit here and go with my perfect life and go, you know what? I want to think like this guy. You're out of your mind. I don't believe in it. And because I don't believe in it, it's made me the kind of person who can't become depressed. And the reason they don't like me attacking that is because depression is a fantastic way to subdue a population, right? If everybody's depressed, it's hard to have a revolution. You're depressed. Oh, they've locked us all in our houses. I don't want to go outside anyway. I'm sad, right? So depression is a fantastic tool of population control. They, want, they have no problem with you being depressed. They have a problem with you being the opposite, principled and energetic. No, you don't want principled, energetic people. That's a problem. Bunch of depressed people, easy. If you had to invade a country, would you rather the opposing army be principled and energetic or depressed? I'll tell you, I would not want to be invaded by a cheerful army. Absolutely. That's scary. They're having too much fun, right? You want them all to be depressed. So a morose army is easier to defeat. I agree. Absolutely. So depression is a defended idea. You're not allowed to even talk about it. You're not allowed to help people get out of it, right? They like the idea of a depressed population. And this is what I say to people. Now, I'm not stupid. I understand like PTSD is real. I understand mental health is real. I'm not saying that, but I say if you're an 18 year old boy or 18 year old man and your life is pretty much okay, bacteria didn't steal your eyesight, which could have happened. You never had a car crash and lost both of your legs, which could have happened. You're actually very fortunate. And you wake up and you say, I'm depressed. I think you're an idiot. I don't think you're depressed. I think you've been psyoped. I think you feel a little bit of depression and you can fix that by changing your life. I think if you became rich and strong and smart and successful and you worked hard and you dedicated yourself and you were motivated and you tried your very, very best to become excellent, you probably wouldn't feel depressed anymore, which means it's not a disease, is it? So how, so why would you, well, the only reason you're even saying you have depression is because you believe in it. So you're arguing for cause and effect. You're saying if you live a certain way, you're going to feel a certain way. Absolutely. And I also would argue that I think we've evolutionarily even though I do believe in God, I think that we've designed ourselves and the human has grown into a way where if you feel depressed or sad, I think that's a fantastic trigger or a warning signal to do something. If you were to say to me, Andrew, you have to do, you have to complete this monumental task. You have to conquer the world. I would say, okay, but I need a, I need a emotional motivation to do that. I need to be unhappy having not completed the task. You know, I need to be uncomfortable, right? If you're uncomfortable, being out of shape, you'll get in shape. If you're happy being out of shape, then you're just gonna stay out of shape, right? So if you feel a degree of uncomfortableness inside of your mind, I think it's just your mind telling you that something about your life needs to change. Yes. You need to get up and change something. 
guys would say to me, I'm depressed because I'm fat and I have no girlfriend. And I'd say, no, you have no girlfriend and you're fat and that's why you're depressed. If you go change those two things, you'd probably be surprised that your disease goes away.